I've been asked a question uh, to review something, a software which I have already heard about, which I was already interested in. It's very in line with what I do right now. A lot of my work comes from color grading, and it's something I really love to do as well. They're called Dehancer. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's sort of like an analog film emulation type plugin where yeah you got all these different parameters where you can just try to replicate um i feel like we all try to replicate it at some point in our lives uh, as video makers photographers uh, we try to emulate this uh, analog look from the past so yeah this is what this is going to be about i've been asked to make this review very honestly and uh, they haven't told me anything to say i've been uh, using it for like two months or so now so i've got quite a good grasp of it i mean it goes deeper than just of course and just sliding some parameters around and knowing what they do that's how i get to learn most of my things i will go into some depth of these of these like uh tools a bit more what they what they really tell what they try to tell but also just see if, like for the most part just slide around and see what happens let's just go over them let me see it's over here you can find it at the film emulation sub menu as you guys can see, it's different lighting. I'm in a different outfit. Because uh, when I wanted to start uh, with this review and get in really into it, I figured that my license was uh, expired. So uh, I got these one month licenses to, you know, make this review. It was just expired. So I had to ask for a new one. Yeah, let's do some grading. I will explain some of these uh, features. And um, yeah, I'm just going to turn everything off, you know? So we're just going to go one by one. Well, I think let's just go over it before we start grading, you know, one by one. What are all these sections doing? What do they mean? Yeah, I think that's the best way to go about this. So as you see, there's an input section. What is your source footage like? Is it is it shot in log or is it just like, is it Rec 709? Here you could like use different log conversions for let's say I shoot, I shoot on a Fuji. So I'll be able to like select an F log in here. Can like, you know, make my footage immediately look like... A, 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 Furthermore, you have all these like buttons, like an exposure compensation and whatnot. All these sliders here are actually used for like errors in your source footage. So you have an exposure compensation, a temperature compensation, tint compensation, the fringe. Yeah, all these things which you can get uh, like all these faulty things out of your image. So we have this film developer tool as well. This only works when enabled if you've also enabled the film section. Here you have the film stock section, of course. Here you have all these different film stocks and whatnot. Maybe you recognize some like a Cinestar still or like the classic Kodaks you know Portra 400 but also some crazy ones also like some good black and white ones also like the Loma Chrome with the right exposure you would see how it's supposed to look so moving on we have this film compression tool so in this one lets you fine tune like the redistribution of the highlights you can get a better tonal range uh, we'll see in a bit what it does after that we have an expand section this lets you set your like black and white point uh, very straightforward I would say we will see it in a bit as well here we have print section this is like the the last stage in the whole analog process it has these like different prints from kodak or fuji um which will give you a certain like finishing look on top of your already chosen film stock beneath that you have a color head uh this is actually just to add in some color here and there you have the yellow blue slider so it's all these opposing colors so sliding to the left will give you magenta to the right will give you green i think film gray will speak for itself is this nice little grainy texture all these analog images just seem to have you can also like choose different profiles so how would this look on a 16 mil cam an 8 mil 35 or 65 even you could also like may do it customly which is what i would do sometimes uh, if i wanted to be done quickly you know I would choose one of these profiles that are like pre-made when it's possible I would like to have all the controls so I would just use the custom controls then we got the halation you know and these are these halos these yellow and red halos which are always around like bright object which is also I feel like a very popular trend right now as well in the whole filmmaking community or even photography I would say uh yeah this can also like create this glare in mid-tones which is where the skin tones are that's also like a possibility. Bloom is, you could say it's sort of like a pro mist effect. Yeah, so it's not like a softening effect because uh, it only appears around like the brightest uh, parts of the contrasting like areas. And we have film damage and film damage is like the hairs and the dust, the scratches, all these things which can like appear when you're shooting on like these analog formats. Then you have film breathe. Film breathe is like all these accidental changes in exposure and color and contrast. Also here you have all these different profiles which will like emulate the Super 16 or the Super 35 but when you go into the custom mode you will see that there's more to be uh, adjusted. Gate weave 
so to be honest i'm not totally sure about how this looks in real time or like fully understand it so i've just looked it up i'm just gonna read it out is the mechanical swinging of a film strip while it is being pulled through a frame window in a film camera, a projector, or a video coding device. So do with that whatever you want. We're just gonna see how it looks. So I did see that it's quite demanding on FPS and my computer is just the worst at the moment. So I don't know if we're gonna like see real time results of how this looks like very well, but otherwise it is just what it is. Yeah, I think we cannot really see that in real time. And also you're gonna see with all the other adjustments I'm gonna do, it is quite a bit slow and it's quite a bit laggy after adjusting these sliders so that's already adds up that's why i'm gonna be upgrading to this new macbook very very soon so i will be like editing three times faster i hope yeah let's just get into all these settings and let's just make it great i would say we're just gonna turn everything off the input choose camera vendor it's a fujifilm do an xh2s because that's my camera and then i shoot an f2 so now you can already see it is like transformed into a normal image uh, which you can start grading i'm just gonna look and see how my exposure is doing here. These are quite sensitive. I don't even touch them that much, but I'm gonna add it up a little bit. I think it's quite a bit purple or like reddish the thin. So you're gonna get a bit of green in there. Temperature wise, it make it a bit colder. So I think this is a nice starting point, I would say. So I said before, to use the film developer, like this, when you enable it, it doesn't do anything. You'd have to load up a film stock. And we're just gonna do that. We're just gonna search for one here. We're just gonna go for one. A little bit of trial and error here, because I don't know how all of these look, of course. Move here. That is quite cool. That is quite cool. Mm. I think I'm gonna go for this one or... Okay, this looks a bit extreme, but we can, we can dial something different in. Let's go for a challenge. Let's do this one. And then we're going to go back to the film developer. And now we see that indeed like things start moving. Let me see. Maybe we can just do like a low contrast to look. And this is the extreme. Yeah, let's go somewhere in the middle. Okay. Okay, let's get some colors in. Because it is quite desaturated, I would say. Yeah, something around here. But you also have this push and pull slider at the film stock section. It can be really like used as a creative tool, I would say. So with negative film, it affects color and contrast. With positive film, it's more on the exposure, so it opens up block shadows or blown out highlights. This seems to be uh, doing some exposure work. I think we're good where we're at. Right, let's open up the film compression and enable it. You can already see it does something here just by flicking it on. Remember, this was about the redistribution of highlights and tonal range. So as you can see, it's already like giving us a more rich highlight look, more depth, loses some of the white points. So, you know, I will give that back a bit, but a bit more of a contrast there. And the impact slider is just it's sort of like the strength. Then you have the tonal range. I think this is like an interesting tool because you can see when you do it to the left, it's sort of almost undoing the effect. So more white highlights, uh, they have a brighter value. Turn to the right, like all the way to the right. It sort of like adds dynamic range, you would say. And it just creates a richer, deeper tones, which I like. So I'm just going to go with that. Dial it down just a little bit. Color density is, it's subtle, but it's, it's the depth of this blue sky. As you can see, it's giving it more color. So as you can see, we've already got a nice image here. Let's just look our monitors up. Yeah, okay, pretty lifted shadows. It's just what you want, you know. You can also make videos like this. It, it's fine, it's just, it's just a bit washed out. It's just preference as well at the same time. I think this will give it some more riches if we bring this back into a fight. The white boy can go up, I think we're good at 93. So let's move on to the print section. There's actually not happening anything now. They do say if you are gonna use a print, you use Fujifilm if you have used the Fujifilm stock. So you're not gonna use a Kodak print film. Um, I mean, for creative purposes, probably you can, but like uh, essentially Fujifilm print film is used for Fujifilm stocks and Kodak print film is used for Kodak uh, film stocks. So let's just see what this does. Okay, so this is a bit extreme, I would say. Yeah, we can see if, this, if we can flip this around. Otherwise, you also have the option of doing a linear one which is now does nothing, but this one you can dial in yourself, sort of, you know, so you can bring a bit more richness here with the tonal contrast, bring the exposure up just a little bit. And the color density is a nice one. You can see in the skin tones, it's a bit too red this, but just tiny bit just gives it a bit more color. These reds are looking like very nice over so here. We're just gonna go from here. 
to the color head and like I said this is just like for pushing colors in your image get blue with blue and yellow with yellow it's pretty straightforward we're just gonna balance it out a bit because I would say now it's a bit of a blue image so I like what this yellow is doing here it doesn't have to be much but it, it makes it more balanced I think five is even good already let's go a bit over the top yeah I would say five what does the magenta green do mm. I never push green that much. I don't know. It depends on the image, but uh, you know, with more magenta, you can see he's got like getting white, pinkish, purple, red in his skin. So maybe we don't even have to push this one. Put it in minus one. I think a little bit of red. Yeah, like this makes it really nice. So let's add some gray. Look, so this preset for me is like a lot for sure, like this 8 millimeter one, but. The 65 could have some nice uh, subtle ones. Like this would actually be pretty fine. I'm just gonna go to the custom one. Uh, here, obviously, you have the size of the grain. I over exaggerated. You can see this makes it more like a super ape one. And now you get more to the five one. The amount is, of course, the amount. <laughs> We're just gonna put that one. And the film resolution, if you put it all to the right and then all the way to the left, it sort of blurs the image. So it's almost like a Gaussian blur, which is actually quite nice because film is not very sharp. So I always like to put this not completely to the right, but a little bit to the left, you know, get that digital sharpness out a bit. And then here you have shadows, midtones, and highlights and chroma and shadows, midtones, and highlights. They just say, okay, in the shadows, here you have so much grain in the midtones, here you have so much grain and in the highlights, you have so much grain. So now if we look at the highlights, the blue sky, and we take it all the way down it's only affecting the highlights and then if we do the mid tone it is only affecting the skin and the shadows if we up that you can see more so in the shadows it's getting grainy than in the highlights you can play around with these to however you like it and the chroma is uh, you know your color noise i like to have a bit of chroma noise always let's add some relation when i just flicked it on it also adds this it adds stuff over here at the yellow sign but you can also see it adds to the skin so it can also create a red glare over midtones and even in the sky you see that it changes up a bit um, but i like what it does you can see it at this scala logo that's what i really like you have to dial it in right i see all these videos on instagram which are like overdoing it i don't think it's like natural or how it's supposed to look but if you get it right with all these custom settings or even with the preset um it can be quite convincing you know it is convincing by just being subtle all these things have to be subtle to just eventually give this feeling of of this analog look let me see i don't even know what all these mean per se so smoothness is quite straightforward i would say is the smoothness of this halo surrounding the light object then these are quite important so local diffusion and global diffusion and local diffusion is it is acting on the edge of this bright object and like making the halo wider or not and then global diffusion makes it more penetrable over the whole image as you see it is now added on top of like everything this is what i said about the mid tones and the skin tones so with this you can sort of taper it off like where it's supposed to hit and then you know with live with the local diffusion you see it's around the edges it just uh makes it wider and more pronounced but not realistic and this is what i talked about with being subtle so you just wanted to go around the edges a little bit and i don't like when it's like doing too much over my mid-tones and stuff it's not wrong it's just not the look i'm, go I'm going for so i'm just gonna put this down a bit you can also switch the use some more yellow or more red and if we just switch this off now yeah we can just see it does just a tiny bit not too much and that's it i believe i don't want to do anything about that anymore so bloom this is what i said this is like a promise filter you can already see it with these presets but the super edge you can see is more pronounced all these different settings as well how you can uh, diffuse it a bit more or not see this a lot on instagram right now i don't know it's just not it's just not a good look i feel i i believe it's not a good look if you try to emulate this this feels like it's being sharpened in a way these edges just don't feel natural to me but i see it a lot of course this is way too much shit <laughs> so i will like always like dim it down like this let's say now we can see it it's just very subtle i already have a promise filter on so i never do this too much maybe i just add a little bit more just for the sake of it but um yeah that's about it then film damage this is one is has to be like seen in movement so this is where you like get all your hairs and stuff uh, i don't use this too much uh, to the total amount yeah so now you see like all these white scratches and um, everything and if you were to like play this it will be different every time just gonna like go for a very subtle one with the 65 uh see how it looks later 
is so film read is all these accidental changes in color and exposure and contrast it's like a mechanical effect so you would have to see it in motion and you know it's really not my best bet to go ahead and try to see how it is acting in motion so we're just gonna go with this and add it to the footage i do know about this period slider how jerky is this film read gonna be the larger the value the smoother the fluctuations, the smaller the value, the uh, more jerky the footage is going to be. Just go with a jerky one for now. So here you have the exposure, tonal contrast and color. And this is what I said about it affects uh, accidental change in exposure or contrast or color. If you were to slide this up, you would have more difference in color and so on and so on. Gate beat, the last one, because we all know what vignette is, of course. So let's check out gate weave so like i said this is fps demanding so we can't really check it out i'm not that well trained to know what these do because i haven't touched them that much in these couple months that i've been like trialing this we're just gonna leave this off you can check out false colors with monitor you can also generate luts which is cool it does not like translate the mechanical so gate weave and stuff and the grain the mechanical aspects of the answer but it does do all like the contrast related stuff but it isn't like a complete grade which you can like copy and paste through this LUT generator. So um, I thought you should know that. And yeah, so I think this is the look. I think this is the look. I quite like it. You can see it zooms. This is what the gate weave does, I believe. We could also add some secondaries maybe to maybe balance things out a bit more. Yeah, I like to add new and saturation curves as well to... I like turning those greens into more of like a real green instead of like yellow. And then add a bit of saturation. I believe it's a bit in here as well. You know, this really adds... It just creates this more of a distinctive look in the background with these greens and these ones over here. Yeah, I like this neutral look more desaturated. We get a bit more vintage with this. More purple-ish. Yeah, this this really adds, man, this use saturation curves. If you move around the order of these effects, you can see that my use saturation curves do it differently over there than before, you know? And I do know that the answer says put everything before the plugin, because if you were to manipulate it with the answer, that's the last step in the whole process. Everything had to be set beforehand rightly how you want it to on set but I, I mean i like to switch it around and not really listen to that i would say although i do appreciate what they're saying and i know what they're saying but it's just like a creative choice uh, i feel like you know it just makes a different look so i'm just gonna go with this and uh, place it afterwards i've added some tweaks with the color curves so if i put everything off you see what we started with blank log footage at the answer we get this this does a lot, man. It's subtle, but it just changes the whole uh, appearance, I would say. And there's some color curves where a bit of filling in, a bit more red, a bit more neutral. And uh, I would say this is very pleasing to look at. Yeah, I would definitely uh, be able to create something like this um, using only these three, these three layers. So uh, I think we did a pretty good job. Let me know what you think. It's always subjective, but um, it's uh, always nice to hear some different opinions as well than only my own so yeah maybe do one more maybe because we've already done someone we're just gonna do this nature one <laughs> Yeah, I'm just finishing this one up. This was really different, but that's why I like to use seconders because, you know, I couldn't have done this with only the use saturation curves, of course. So that's why I love this layering stuff, you know, and, and I would never use the answer just as a stand on, I would think. I have actually for some quick jobs where I didn't want to spend too much time grading, but for my own projects or like more important um, projects, I would always like do more stuff. So yeah, there you have it. Two differently graded things um where the answer is used uh, not as a standalone but that isn't how we use it and that's how i wanted to do this review but man it has so much value and also just the way that you emulate film in a very authentic way which you just all these algorithms you wouldn't have otherwise you know so it's it's a real nice atom to have in your arsenal of grading weapons i would say it's really good i think i use it on almost every project so i think that says enough so the answer also has an iPhone iOS app and I'm just gonna open it up and show you around a bit and show you a before and after um, I just wanted to touch on it briefly it's quite cool that they have a, a phone application for this stuff as well I'm just gonna make a photo right there and also here you just have all these film stocks which you can use 
here in the edit section you have all these different parameters which you also have in uh, some of you have them in here as well so this is like a before and after like a quick before and after of what the film sounds like yeah you literally have all the different elation wow you have everything i mean almost everything just not like the mechanics stuff oh you do have some grain of course yeah it's really cool this is like the shittiest before and after but i'm just having a quick look okay well there we have it so it is a very nice um application plugin i would say i will i would definitely like recommend it it is quite pricey though it's like uh, what is it 450 us dollars you do get a lot of for it in return and uh, i mean it's all an investment into yourself right and into these tools which will eventually like make you better as a maker so i mean it's worth a trial for sure uh, you can always check it out with a trial if you think hey there's more to it then you just go get it so uh, don't forget you can also get it with a discount code you can use mine it's xeno uh, you get a 10 percent discount on the applications for your computer but not on the ios app uh, i mean it was the first time for me doing a tutorial i believe i've always had this in my head of doing one and now i was forced to do this well not forced i wanted to do this voluntarily for them and which in return i will get the application for for free still it was quite a thing that i wanted to do and having done it now i think it was nice i think it was a learning process but i think i did like it so thank you for watching and let me know if you have bought this and how you liked it or if you haven't or if you have you didn't like it just tell me ciao Thank <laughs> you.